Hey everybody, in today's video, I'm going to show you some really fun non-stitching things that you can do with embroidery floss and this adorable cat themed bundle. This die is going to be the centerpiece. It's a cat tower, but I'm also going to use the little dies that go with the stamp set to cut out a bunch of black cats. And I'm going to show you these two pieces that I'm actually not going to use. I'm replacing these with embroidery floss, but I wanted to show you the two pieces of the die that I'm not using and how they work. These are like the little ladders that go up diagonally on the bottom of the cat tree. And so I'm using these little shaders. I love these brushes to color them kind of like a pine color. And I'll just keep those in my die pocket. Next, I'm not going to be doing ink blending in this portion. I'm just very quickly getting color onto both the pink and what are going to be the gold portions of this cat tree. I'm not blending it. I don't care if it's even. I just don't want white cardstock to show through my embroidery floss. Now the top part, you can see these three beds at the top. Those actually come in two pieces. And in order to make the back portion darker, I'm going to add a little bit of a darker distress ink before I add the pink. So I will get that blended on there again. This doesn't have to be super smooth. I'm going to end up putting three layers on this. So I'm just quickly covering this with color. And that front piece, which is kind of the opening of the cat bed, will be a lighter color and it'll look a lot more dimensional. Now, because I'm using floss to cover these bottom parts, even the parts that have a little die cut with them, I'm also coloring those with a yellow ink very roughly. Okay, so I'm darkening up the top portion, the back of the cat bed, with the pink ink that I'm going to be using for the front and for all the other pink carpeted pieces on this cat tree. You need to put a couple of layers of ink. You're going to see that I'm going to have to come back and put another layer on here because I actually put quite a bit of ink on the front pieces to make them this pretty bright pink. And so I need there to be a contrast between the inside and the outside of the cat bed. So once I have this, I'm obsessed with putting this pink ink on here. Once I put it on that cat bed, it's really not that much darker on the inside. So I will add some more ink before this is done. But you can see how cute and realistic that is. That actually looks just like the cat tree that I have for Maddie and Splotchy. So there is a second cubby. In the center, the little piece that is cut out for the door of that cubby, I end up doing the same thing. I think I did this off camera where I ink blended that to be a little bit darker so that that looks dimensional as well because there's going to be a little kitty in there, of course. You can see all the cats that I cut out. These are in honor of Maddie, who's having a rough week this week. So I am coloring that last little cat bed that's in the center. And this is where I'm like, okay, I need to go back and add some more ink. So the bottom portion, at least on my cat tree at home, has carpet as well. So I'm making that match the pink all over it. And these little shaders are great because they're almost exactly the size of the elements of this cat tree. And I realized I forgot to put just a little bit of yellow ink on that center one. Again, don't spend a lot of time on that because it's all going to be covered up. So now I will darken just with the pink ink again. I'm not going back with the distress ink. Just go back and put another layer. You can keep layering it until it's as dark as you want. But look how different that looks. Just adding that one more layer of ink makes such a big difference. So now I'll use my precision glue press to attach the front of the cat beds. And I also have a little kitty that's kind of going to be partway in and partway out of this cat bed. So I'm going to, this is why I love liquid glue, because I'm going to put this down and then finagle that cat kind of behind it so that part of the cat is inside the cat bed and part of the cat is outside the cat bed. 
So I will slip him in just by lifting the edge of that and kind of tucking his little foot back there so that he's a little bit covered up. And look how realistic that looks. That looks just like when Maddie sits in a cat bed. So cute. So while that cat is lounging in cat bed number one, this cat is taking a bath in cat bed number two. And you can decide where you want to put them. I'm just putting a little glue on the bottom of this kitty so that there isn't just glue hanging out on the back of the top of his head while I'm working. I'm working on the grip mat, which is my favorite way to ink blend. I love this. It's also great just for holding your cards while you're stamping in the misty. So I use it for a lot of different things. So now I'm going to arrange the rest of the cats. Now you can do this before you put, put some of the cats in before you add your embroidery floss. Or you can just wait until you're completely done and do that step last. It's totally up to you. But because these have these straight little posts, it's easy to wrap the floss around them because you can just tip them a little bit behind or in front of the other two posts and it's very easy to do. But I'm going to show you some tips for this because I love this look. I think it's so cute. And I'm going to be giving one of these cards that I made with this cat tree to the people that took care of Maddie when she was in the hospital. So now I'm going to put on this final cat bed just a little bit over his feet. He's reaching up to taunt the other cat as cats do. And now I will just remove this from the grip mat and get started on the next portion. Now I really recommend using a strong double-sided adhesive on these posts because this thread, because it's gold, it's a little bit slick. And so glue, I don't think would be as effective, but the double-sided tape really holds this really nicely. And to get it started, you'll see me just pinching the thread into the adhesive once you get one or two or three loops around there, and then the rest of it goes really, really fast. So you can just wrap each one of these little posts with this gold thread. They also have the silver thread that's up to you, but I thought that this really looked like the sizal wrapping that's on most cat beds. Now, the other thing the tape lets you do is have a little tail so you can hide the beginning of the floss on like vertically, like you can see I have mine here. You're hiding all that underneath the wrapping. So it's like double secure. It's stuck into the tape and it's hidden under this other layer of wrapping. So you can see I do five or six little wraps and then I press them really hard with my thumbs just to make sure that they're seated in that adhesive. Now I use double sided tape also to hold the little ends down because there are going to be ends when you're done wrapping one of these posts as well. So I'm getting close to the end here. I'm going to have to cut this off. And I find that the easiest way to kind of corral that little tail is with another side of double-sided adhesive tape. And I'm just holding it down with my glass board magnet as I cut a little piece of tape. The great thing about using the double-sided tape for this is it can then also be used, depending on what you do on the back, to hold that onto your card. So those little elements already have adhesive on them by the time they you are done wrapping those posts. But doesn't that look cute? I just love those. I think it's so cute. Now in the center section, I have wrapped all those posts. Like I said, there is already a die for that. It, on this section, it's actually, you can thread a needle and go in and out of those little openings if you want to kind of work your way into the center of that. But when you're done, you'll have little tails down here at the bottom. So it's good to have a piece of adhesive running that way as well. So I'm just going to go clean up these little strings and I'm going to make sure that every little end is tied down before I trim it off with a piece of double-sided adhesive. I just think this is so cute. It looks so realistic. So, so realistic. It's adorable. My vet is going to be astonished that you can make, hand make a little cat tree card that looks as realistic as this one does. Just adorable. 
So what I did when I was finished with this card is I adorned it with the rest of the cats and I did it over that heart's background die. So there are little openings in the background, but then I positioned the little cats around there. And then I added the sentiment and cut that out with the matching die. So be sure and check the description below the video for some very important information today and head over to my blog for additional information. And thanks so much for watching.